So it's been almost eight years since Man of Steel came out in theatres for the first time, and when it originally released it was met with mixed reviews across the board. There were people on one side who, like myself, really saw the powerful messages and quality filmmaking behind the project, while others found the film too loud, too action packed and too dark for the character of Superman. I think since its release many people have changed their mind on the film after re-watches and in this video I'm going to be discussing what made Man of Steel so underrated for its time and why I personally appreciate the film so much. I am covering this film and Batman v Superman in the build up to the release of Zack Snyder's Justice League so don't forget to subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications so that you don't miss out on any of this content. Also if you enjoy this video remember to give it a like rating. But without further ado let's dive into why I believe Man of Steel was ahead of its time. So Man of Steel was the DCEU's first film and one which laid the groundwork for the larger shared universe. After the disappointment of 2006's Superman Returns, many fans had high hopes for the movie. The Dark Knight's Christopher Nolan was a consultant and story advisor on the project and Zack Snyder who had previously made the phenomenal comic book adaptations Watchmen and 300 was brought in to direct. The cast was littered with Oscar bait actors including Amy Adams, Diane Lane, Kevin Costner, Michael Shannon and Lawrence Fishburne. But despite these high expectations, the film received extremely mixed reviews. While some loved it, many found it dark, depressing and thoroughly disappointing. Henry Cavill was labelled wooden, the script bland and the direction pretentious. But was it really that bad? In my opinion, and I know there will still be a few people watching this video who disagree, it's a film that exploits Superman and breaks him down as a character. It does so in thoughtful ways that you can either really appreciate or focus on the obvious like how much destruction there was. To start off with, my biggest point towards the criticism of Man of Steel being dark is that Superman's backstory is depressing, it just is. The destruction of his entire planet and species, being treated differently from other children, growing up to watch humanity destroy itself and being constantly misjudged for his attempts to help them. So why does everyone expect his story to be an upbeat portrayal and one that is bright in approach? Well even though I absolutely love Richard Donner's Superman, his films were generally light hearted and fun, with happy endings for the heroes. The great Christopher Reeve perfectly brought to life the character in the American way, as he was portrayed in the original comics. Clark Kent was kind, intelligent and Cal el was strong, courageous, selfless and heroic. The same traits are present in Cavill's version of Superman, yet for some reason the more realistic portrayal of the film is seen in a negative light. Personally, I like when comic book characters are brought to life as real and relatable people. They don't have to be the same cheesy cliches that they are on the page and with Man of Steel I believe every character on the screen, even though we are watching essentially a god with unbelievable powers. More to the point, there's Henry Cavill himself. We all love Christopher Reeve but nothing about him was physically imposing. Cavill on the other hand trained like hell to become the embodiment of strength and power and I had no trouble believing him when he threw trucks and bent steel. He truly looked like Superman and on top of this, the story and the approach helped to elevate that further. This is where we start to go deeper into the story of Man of Steel and the directorial skills of Zack Snyder. Despite his aforementioned masterpieces, it has somehow become fashionable to hate him within the last few years. Sure, nobody's perfect and I'm not the biggest fan of a lot of aspects in Batman v Superman, but he certainly has more hits than misses. And his ability to be creative yet also faithful to comic sources is up there with some of the greatest directors working in the genre. 
He paints almost religious-like imagery and contrasts it with science fiction, and it makes for thought not only in the story, but also in the filmmaking. Coming to the story and sequences in the film, I must mention Krypton's opening which is an excellent dive into this world. It simultaneously introduces the main characters, establishes the core conflict, and interjects some immediate stakes into the story. While comic book fans were already well versed in Krypton's existence, casual viewers likely weren't, making the sequence an exciting introduction to Superman's homeworld. Additionally, opening the film on Krypton allows the viewer to be introduced to Superman's parents. While both had minor roles in previous iterations, they receive more screen time here, with Jor-El having an especially key role in the story later on. Following this sequence, we start to build on Cavill's growth as a character after being sent to Earth and his growing relationship with Lois Lane, played by Amy Adams. Like Cavill, the actress was also considered for previous iterations of the role, and brings instant credibility to Lois's performance. Portrayed as a hard-nosed reporter who is unafraid to confront issues in her line of work, Adams allows the audience to feel as though Lois is a hero in her own right. Though the pair do not share nearly enough screen time, their burgeoning relationship carries weight thanks to the actors' performances. But it's also the way Snyder approaches the story and these characters realistically that makes you care about what's going on. Though understandably not for every movie, Man of Steel handles realism well on a couple of different levels. First, it keeps Superman's core elements intact while giving them plausibility. Cal el must learn to hone his abilities through practice. His powers are weakened by exposure to Kryptonian atmosphere, like General Zod's ship, rather than Kryptonite, and his suit is given a familial origin. Secondly, the story asks the question, what would actually happen if an alien entered our world? Believably, the answer is fear. Jonathan Kent realises this and reiterates to a young Clark the importance of keeping a low profile. This isn't to say that Kent is correct to imply Clark shouldn't rescue people in danger, but it's accurate to say that his fears are warranted based on the love for his son. I think with Snyder and Nolan working on the story, these are the types of questions we also saw in Batman Begins, in that you really sympathise but also consider what the main character is being put up against. He has real human choices to make, even though he's an alien who has these ultra powerful abilities. And then you start to see the reverse to these questions with how Snyder builds the threat. Similar to other high-profile villains such as, say, Thanos, whose villainy is a matter of perspective, General Zod isn't strictly an evil character. In fact, his sole purpose as a Kryptonian is to protect Krypton at all costs and ensure its survival. It's literally what he's born to do. The arrival of Zod's crew on Earth is one of the most suspenseful and visually arresting sequences in the film, when his ship appears in the sky and he begins his broadcast. It invokes feelings of an alien invasion or even a psychological horror movie. And the side villains also help to widen this sense of threat, such as Zod's chief soldier, Fiora Al, for earning her keep as one of the most formidable foes in the Superman pantheon. We know that shared universes are so popular now, that when making Man of Steel's self-contained story, it becomes an unexpected breath of fresh air upon many re-watches. Aside from a couple of non-distracting teases of the greater DC world, this story is 100% Superman focused. Thanks to its singular focus, the main characters have clearly established motivations. Cal el is driven by jor els encouragement to be a leader by representing the best of both Earth and Krypton. Martha and Jonathan Kent protect the younger Clark out of fear for his well-being. Zod is motivated by ensuring Krypton's survival, and Lois by her fearless independence. 
It all adds up on more rewatches, and it really shows the audience the story and character based focus, which is at the heart of most great films, let alone one of the biggest superhero characters. Other points to mention include the technical aspects of the production, scenes and the larger conversations it creates. Unlike previous Superman adventures which included John Williams' iconic Superman theme, Snyder opted to differentiate things and go with a original score. As such, he turned to one of the greatest Hollywood composers working today in Hans Zimmer. Zimmer elects to avoid the sweepingly operatic and joyful themes of the 70s Superman and instead plays to the feelings of hope and triumph in this iteration. Tracks such as This Is Clark Kent embrace the quiet emergence of Clark's humanity, while Flight and What Are You Going To Do When You Are Not Saving The World exhibit Superman's iconography. It's powerful and I think over the years it has become a fan favourite score in cinema that really captures the character, the scale and the messages at play. And talking about powerful messages and scenes that really help to capture that effect, one of the most praised aspects of the film is Superman's flight and no scene is more iconic than his first attempt to fly. Snyder applies just the right amount of restraint in the scene to allow for the moment's importance to resonate both for Cal el and the audience. Set to Zimmer's rousing score, Cal el tries and tries again to fly further and faster. After a couple of missteps, he gets back up and prepares for his final liftoff. This culminates in his propulsion shattering the ground beneath him, illustrating a power that audiences had previously never felt in a Superman movie. The failing over and over again aspect before rising is something that is echoed in the film's events and this scene works in a very important way to establish Clark's shift into the character. But importantly, the film sets up Superman's arc via the relationships he has with his parents and Lois, which establishes the core conflict he must face within himself, his humanity. Given he's an alien who has been isolated and bullied for being different, it's believable that he doesn't quite understand his place as Earth's protector until after Zod's arrival. The third act has many understandable concerns, but those seemingly don't take into account the character elements at play. Superman's inability to control the fight in Smallville is based on his emotional reaction to Martha being threatened, the military's arrival and his lack of experience against Zod's trained warriors. In the final showdown, Zod ensures his own demise by repeatedly taking the fight towards Earth's people and warning Superman he'll never stop threatening him. As writer David Goya describes, Cal L's a novice going against a literal killing machine. This is why he snaps Zod's neck at the end of the film. He has become so connected to humanity and wants to protect them that the minute Zod threatens to kill an innocent family, he must do the one thing he thought he would never do. It's painful to watch when he screams after doing so, but it was an unreversible choice that really makes you think about the responsibility of someone with that power. You don't see it as much in superhero movies as effectively as Snyder made you think about it by the end of this scene. Man of Steel may only be known to some as the ill-fated kickstart to the Justice League, but that detracts from the larger conversations it initiates. After all, movies that generate healthy discussions are typically worthwhile to revisit. One of the largest discussions it starts is the inevitable comparisons to Marvel. While this provides engaging discourse, comparing one to the other based on similar merits doesn't quite hold up. Another debate centres around the consideration for human life, which is absolutely warranted. Superman's battle with Zod put thousands of lives in danger, something he must understand and learn from. Finally, there are questions of tone and character about if the fundamentals of Superman were stripped away. This is important to consider whether it's reasonable for Cal el to understand who Superman is from the moment he walks out of the Fortress of Solitude, or should he be given time to learn? 
After all, the audience knows who he is, but does Clark Kent? We leave on this message, which is explored more in Batman v Superman, but as a singular film, Man of Steel is able to make you think about these centrally important questions for the character. In my opinion, with all of this focus and the way Snyder constructs and presents it, the film is nothing short of being ahead of its time. But that was my video essay for Zack Snyder's Man of Steel and why I think the film was severely underrated. It's all subjective and again, I'm sure many will disagree and not like the story as much, but that's what I have took away over the years of rewatches. I did love the film when it came out, but over time it has only got better and better with more power on every revisit. We'll have to see how Justice League turns out on March the 18th, but after revisiting Man of Steel more recently, it definitely gives me the added excitement in the build-up. Let me know down below what your thoughts are towards Man of Steel, and do you agree with the points I have raised in this breakdown? For more videos on Zack Snyder's work, including Batman v Superman and the director's cut of Justice League when it releases later this month, then subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications. Also, if you enjoyed this video, remember to leave a like rating. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I've been Cortex, and as always, make some noise.